Welcome to Das Geek. I stole all of Michael Tunnell from Tux Digital Secrets, and I'm ready to share them here with you. Now, we recorded like a two and a half hour video while he was here at my house. I was like, hey, set up KDE for me and secretly recorded. Well, it wasn't really secret. He knew what we were doing. We we're making a video. But unfortunately, our big stupid faces in the video cam were over top a lot of the settings and the audio was horrible. So I've had to recreate all of these tips and tricks here with Michael's permission so that everyone who's been begging on our Telegram channel, Destination Linux, of course, check out destinationlinux.network now to see all of the channels a part of this family. People have been begging to see Michael's secrets. So here they finally are, all of the settings that Michael does for KDE at your fingertips. You're welcome. You get it here on the DOS Geek channel. If you are a KDE fan, you don't want to miss this. This is how he sets everything up. We're going to go through all of the different options, tips, and tricks that he performs on his own personal machines. And in fact, when he came over to my house, these were the settings that he used to record Destination Linux when we did it live there. So I hope you enjoy this. Let me know in the comments below. And of course, get out there and subscribe to his channel, Michael Tunnell Tux Digital. First tip is to change the options and application menu to show the name. So and as default, when you look at say the web browser, you see it's called web browser, but we want it to be called Firefox, right? And proud to use Firefox, uh, whatever application you're using. So this one's pretty easy. Right click on the menu, click show applications by name, click apply, click okay. Now, when you go back to applications here, you're going to see it says Firefox first instead of web browser. Who would have thought? Why wouldn't that be a default? I don't know. By the way, we're using OpenSUSE. Change middle click default from cut and paste to open box like menu. So by default, if you middle click on your desktop, you cut and paste whatever was in your clipboard right there into a note, which is really bad if you've happened to have copied your password. In any case, we can change that default pretty easily. Right click, configure desktop. Then we're going to go to mouse actions here and we're going to change that middle cl uh, click button to an application launcher. So now it looks kind of like open box. If you've ever used open box tiling manager, it has an application menu just like that. Of course, we have to change mouse single click default to double click because only insane nutso people use single click. I'm kidding, kind of. Uh, also, at the end of this video, I'm going to have bloopers of the conversations that me and Michael had. So just outtakes and things there so you can see some of the original video. So now you just go here under mouse controls and change that to double click. And now you don't have stupid single click. So you're accidentally opening files when you meant to, you know, just look at them or get information on them. Press F4 and Dolphin. So this is your first tip here. If you have Dolphin File Manager open and you hit F4, the terminal opens. So you get a little terminal, quick way to get to a terminal if you need it right there from within Dolphin. That's an awesome tip. Press F3 to get a split pane view. So if you need to move files from one folder to the other, hit F3 and now you can easily do that here. So this is more tips and tricks. Of course, click preview for thumbnails and larger folders. And one of the things I like to do is make sure that my remote file system under configured dolphin also uh, shows previews and thumbnails because a lot of times I'm searching for videos or specific pictures on the network. Change control F10 from natural to grid for presenting desktop in a normal way. So by default, it kind of does something goofy uh, when you do control F10, you see how it looks. It's kind of got a bunch of small windows and then that giant dolphin window, if anything was full screened um, when you're trying to preview your windows here. So if you just go into your configure uh, desktop here, go under desktop effects, change present windows from natural to regular grid. And once you click apply and okay, if we do that same control F10 to show all applications, it will look normal. 
Look at that, much more normal. And even when we full size, it will look normal, right? It doesn't have one giant window and a bunch of mini windows there. So that is one of the settings Michael does. Add virtual desktops and change control F8 from grid to automatic. Again, kind of a funky default by KDE, but we can go in here and change it. So if you have just two virtual desktops or you don't use any, no big deal. Once you add more than two is really when this tip and trick uh, comes into play. So control F8, this is what it looks like when you have more than two uh, virtual desktops. It kind of puts them in this vertical lineup, which looks really stupid. Uh, so you can go over here into desktop effects under desktop grid and change the default here. Once we change that to automatic, we click apply and OK. And again, that shortcut key is control F8. So now when we show all of our virtual desktops all at once, it looks normal. Imagine that pretty cool tip and trick there. Change global shortcut keys for window tiling, moving windows between monitors and more. So this is really just showing you go into your global shortcuts menu. You can type global shortcuts off of the desktop in KDE through KRunner, which I'll show you here in a minute or go through the settings, but here's where you can change all the shortcuts to move things. Um, this is KRunner, so if you want to find Firefox, you want to open an application, just start typing on the desktop and it will pull up a menu and start searching. That's one of the coolest things about KDE Desktop. Uh, change your menu type. And now we get somebody being like, Plasma Desktop, you jerk. KDE Plasma, whatever. All right, so now we can change our menu here. You have alternatives. If you right click on the standard menu, this gives you kind of that gnome layout type menu here. If you like that big splash panel coming up, uh, you have application launcher and an application menu, uh, which are more standard menus that you may be used to, but no, you can go in there and change it. Uh, Michael likes to utilize the big dashboard view. So this is the menu he utilizes uh, when he's navigating around. Remove the stupid worthless hamburger menu that's stuck in the right hand corner right there. That is probably my favorite tip and trick because I've always hated that stupid thing. So go to configure desktop, go under tweaks and show all desktop, whatever that thing is, desktop layout, remove that toolbox uh, option. And once you remove that, it goes away. So uncheck that, click apply, click OK, and boom, it is gone for good. Uh, you also change to a dark theme. So I'm a very happy and bubbly person, but Michael is very dark. Uh, so he likes that dark theme to match his personality. So you can just go to Breeze Dark and that's what he prefers there. You can also add in, you see, get new looks at the bottom right hand corner of this area and you can download other people's themes. You can also just change the desktop theme itself if you don't want every uh, program to be under dark theme. You can remove title bars by just right clicking in Dolphin and uh, go no border and that will remove the title bar and it's alt f3 to get it back so make sure you read these warning messages here uh, but there's a better option i think which is you can hide the borders or around the windows with a shortcut that michael sets up Control alt b here under global keyboard shortcuts again so i'll expand this out and hide window border, we can set a key combination. So anytime that we want to do that, whether we're tiling, if we're setting up tiling or different things within KDE, we have a shortcut to remove the borders, control alt B. And I'll show you how that works here. We'll open up a program and we will like Libra office and control alt B and you'll see the title bars and the borders kind of going away as I hit control alt B or coming back as I hit it again. This is the best tip, I think. Use Latte Dock as your panel. So Michael doesn't use the traditional panel. So first thing you gotta do is install Latte Dock uh, on your distribution here. I'm using OpenSUSE. So I'm using YAS naturally to install it, but whatever distribution you're using, install Latte Dock and then go ahead and launch it. And once you do that, you go into the dock and panel settings. And here is where you can play. If you want to have First thing we're gonna do is move it to the top because it's just easier to work with since we already have a menu down there. You can play with all of these different options here. 
You can add things like widgets and other programs into your dock and fully deck it out. You can make it look like a unity bar on the left hand side if you want, whatever your heart desires. But this is exactly how Michael sets it up. He actually uses it as his full launcher. So he gets rid of that panel on the bottom and utilizes the latte dock entirely. So he's putting the application menu here inside the dock. And then we're going to add a bunch of things like system trays and everything else that you would expect to see in a full panel on your desktop. We're adding right to latte docs. Latte doc can do it all. And if you see on the left hand side over there, dock to panel. So once you click that panel button, now it turns it into a full panel and you can mess with the length and things. So it goes all the way across or keep it just in the middle, however you like it. And boom, you've got your panel all the way across the border. So now what we're going to do is remove the standard panel at the bottom. It comes with KDE by default, more settings, remove panel, poof, gone. And now we're going to move latte dock back down now that we've kind of set it up as a panel and move it to the bottom there and already looking gorgeous. And you can make the icon smaller. You can make it small, big, however you want and add as many widgets in. Here we're going to remove that standard analog clock because to me it's ugly and we're going to put some digital clock in there because we are technically advanced so we must have a digital clock i think that makes sense so you've got a search menu up here for the widgets as well so we'll type in clock see all of our options here click and drag down to your panel and it will give you a place for you to add it right there in the middle it looks gorgeous look at that that's the best tip and trick out of all of them i think right there and getting rid of that stupid toolbox menu in the right hand corner so you can add any widget your heart desires your task managers everything just like you would normally have and of course you can right click in the panel and add spacers and move the different elements wherever you want them the world is the limit here so these are all the tips and tricks that michael shared when he set up the system to be like his i hope you've enjoyed them let me know in the comments below if there's anything new that you learned here or some cool tips and tricks that you know of your own. And of course, DOS Geek Channel is now part of DestinationLinux.network. So go check out DestinationLinux.network. I'm going to have some new cool things out there for my patrons as well. Thank you for all the love and support of the channel and hope you enjoyed this stolen video archive of Michael's secret KDE setup. There you go. Until next time. Get out there and fill your brains. Almost right away. Almost. Yeah, you're welcome. It takes a little bit of time for stopping, but the actual start. Welcome is... to Dust Geek. It's not. I'm in the seat now. Fill your brains. I'm in the seat now. This is the throne. Arch. The Dust Throne. Are you Arch? Okay. Of course. Of course. Anyway. So, welcome to a special episode of a show that doesn't exist. What about the thing we agree about most, that the people who do this are complete garbage, trash, and shouldn't even be a lot? Okay, maybe I went too far, but the single click default. <laughs> the single click default. Yes, I was going to get to that. Okay. Uh, but uh, I think that was it's going to be very volatile, I agree. There's going to be a lot of arguments. But uh, the issue with the single click versus the, the, the double click, only matters with the fault. If you like single click, we yeah. don't like you. I was gonna say more power. Oh, to this you. is your video. I'll let you do it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was more power to you. You don't have to sync it. <laughs> it's literally right here, built into the video. I was trying to help. <laughs> You're welcome. I don't have my actual <laughs> thing. So let's, let's let's do it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you didn't think you were going to get away with that, did you? That was good. Like, I did not expect it at all, and it got me good. Okay. Kind of first started with the argument between, like, Linux was the first, first thing that I know of to have uh, virtual desktops and workspaces, uh, you know, slash workspaces. Uh, so the argument was, like, they both were really much at the same time, and they both were constantly having a term, like, you know, which one is which. Okay. Right. So it wasn't until like Mac adopted it and started calling them workspaces, or no, virtual desktops, and then Windows also called workspaces. Those are brand new though. 
Anyway, you add a new row. You are the expert in Mac and Windows. It it's, looks the same. It's no, it's slightly brighter. Okay, but you're right. It, it's very similar, but it's, it's pretty it's, close. Okay, they kind of dulled it down a little bit. Yeah. I, okay, I, I'm, I'm too specific about colors. I can tell you the shades of gray. So let's not even talk. Let's Isn't just, that a book? Anyways, move on. <laughs> okay, so once you have, once you change it, you can get the nice hybrid approach. Huh? <laughs> Here, edit, another edit point. Go ahead. Okay, once you get it, you get a nice, uh, ad, you know, you get to be able to. Okay. <laughs> Remember, Linux is everywhere. That's true. Okay. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to watch the video.